shut off this track. Okay. Is anyone there? Just three people. What? What is going on? Hopefully everybody's back to work. <laughs> but the new song is up there. Oh, I'm getting a text. No. Okay. I thought maybe it was Bruce. Bruce saying, uh, your sound is off. I didn't check. Let me check. Surely somebody would have said something. Nope, I got sound. All right. Ed's first. So what is going on? Dennis, how are you feeling this morning or this evening? You got some water or something? Holly's in the house. Anthony, good to see you. sound better pentatonic sound better high I feel it's just weird like on mandolin they sound great in fact if I play I feel like the pentatonic shapes and I'm, I'm gonna use like for D that our favorite pentatonic number one here but for G I'll use this uh, no. and for C I'll use pentatonic number two Pentat uh, for G I'll use pentatonic number four and something about it just is more fun to play with you know it's part of it's just I'm not Playing with open strings and fretted notes is hard sometimes, so. Thing. The other, the other hard part is uh, let me stop. Oh, jam tracks right there. The other part is limiting what, limiting myself and going. I'm only going to play the pentatonic shapes. You know, uh, I was messing around too with playing. This is always a good exercise, uh, especially in bluegrass. It's just to play a chord and then the G chord and like play the pentatonic around it. Same thing with the C. to different scales it's really hard to to limit myself to notification was slow oh, okay that's weird that's all right hey bruce thank you for joining thank you for being here jim horace bob schumann good to see you ed you were first this time roger good morning roger good to see you i think jack's liking working at uh uh northrop uh the funny thing is i think he's only been there like twice now he's been working from home this whole time Um, and so, um, it's kind of weird. I mean, he hasn't really gotten a sense of the whole campus thing, but he was working from home with, 
with JPL at the end there, um, you know, it, it starting in March. So, uh, so he, that's kind of the norm right now in the industry. But, but he said, when I get on the more hand, hands off stuff, it'll have to go in. But. Uh, Sam, good to see you. So we're going to review. I, I, I uh, uploaded, if you go to the Discord, um, shoot, I should have pre-copied copied that link. Why didn't I not do that? Here it is. Unless Dennis beats me to it. Um, and, oh, the other day when I went to the guitar store, Westwood Music, it was with my friend Josh uh, Goodwin, who is Justin Bieber's uh, main engineer. Um, and, man, Josh is freaking on fire right now he is just he's got so many songs in the top 10 right now it's hilarious he's got three songs that he mixed in the top 10 and then his the record he just did um was it bad bunny <laughs> i know that sounds funny but uh i think it's like it's number one in like 119 countries or something like that it's like wait what uh so he is he is crazy on fire um uh, but he, he wants to spend more time concentrating on writing and less on engineering, although he's really, 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 really good at engineering. He's one of the best, clearly. Um, but so I told him I would go with him. And he's a good friend. And I told him I would go with him to the store and we would uh, I would play a bunch for him so he could hear him from. Because, again, he's being an engineer. He's got great ears. So he could really I mean, I can hear a difference be between guitars because I've played a lot of guitars and I've been playing guitar for a long time. But he can hear a difference between guitars because he's got really good ear memory, which is, you know, they have those tests. I don't know if you've ever done that where it's color memory and they put two colors and they're separated by, I don't know if it's white or black or whatever. But and you say, are they the same color? And you say yes or no. And then you're like, then they bring them together and you're like, you weren't even close. <laughs> you go, yeah, they were. that's totally the same color. And then you bring them together and you're like, oh, no, it's a different shade of green or whatever. And uh a paler shade of whatever. And, um, uh, he, you know, there are people like that too with their ears. It's like you hear something and then you put it down and you forget it already. Um, and he's really good. So he, so I, we played through, he really wanted to get a Collins. Now he, now he wants, now he's got the bug for boutique guitars. He's like, so what's a Santa Cruz like? And I'm like, uh, those are nice too. <laughs> so, um, but unfortunately, Westwood Music in L.A. is going out of business because of COVID and um, because of the shutdowns. So they're going to be open for a couple more months and they're not getting any new stock. So they do have they did have some nice guitars. So we uh, he was wanting to get a smaller body guitar. And but all of his guitars are smaller. In fact, I gave him a, a, a as a gift. I gave him a baby tailor that I tuned up high strung because he was really into my high strung work. And I said, well, let me get you a high strung guitar. And, you know, he generates a lot of work for me. So. Uh, it was a, it was a total justifiable expenditure, and um, he, uh, but so he had a lot of smaller body guitars. So then we start playing the bigger ones, and he was like, "Yeah, you know what? This sounds great." And he's got an old Martin. He's got a forty-eight Martin. I think it was a, a triple, triple O fifteen or whatever. It's a real common mahogany Martin that you know people were picking up because it's a actually a a, a fairly cheap vintage martin you can get i don't know what they're going for now but for a while there there were like 1500 bucks for a early 60s martin um or even 50s martin and maybe they're getting up into the 2500 dollars range or whatever i think his is a 47 um but it's not like it's not like a, a you know a 28 or a 35 or a 45 or a 42 those are the more expensive guitars you wouldn't find old ones of those that cheap um but he had smaller guitars and the martin was really hard to play so he wanted something to kind of played itself and the Collins are set up really, really nice. Um, and so that's what we ended up getting. So he, he, he got a really, really nice Collins for Collins for a pretty good, darn good deal. I mean, like I said, I said, uh, Monday, they gave him about 20% off of out the door price. So that was pretty dope. Lighter shade of pale. That's what I couldn't think of. Which is kind of like a lighter shade of pale. Just the title is like an oxymoron, isn't it? Or is it a redundancy? You know, I've never really read the lyrics. Yeah, another victim of gas, definitely. He's He's got the gas. Of course, he's got the gas in the studio. He's got all sorts of... 
like the most amazing speakers in the studio and he's got you know outboard gear and everything everything's done in the computer now it's funny because he doesn't have a big mixing board he's got a keyboard and like you know that kind of control but not, not a big mixing board for when he mixes records it's pretty it's pretty crazy how it's totally changed um oh did i say dope shoot all right sip everybody say so i said that's dope or it was dope <laughs> showing my age that's how you know you're old when you're trying to sound hip in the 90s and it's 2020 <laughs> All right, let me get my windows ordered here so I can see myself. <laughs> uh oh, COVID. There's no one. I, I can't have. Well, I could have COVID because my wife is teaching now. So, but I'm like, I never see anybody. I'm here. I go to Starbucks and I'm here, and that's it. Uh, I really don't go anywhere. Well, church on the weekends, I guess that's true. But even at church, I have such a long gap between the first and second service on Sunday that I just come home because I'd rather just come home and, and, and work than, oh, is it, is it a whiter shade of pale? Still, still kind of an oxymoron, lighter shade of pale, whiter. That's a good question. Well, somebody's going to look it up and, and solidify that. Bob Schumann caught the dope. <laughs> David Sillers, I hope you're well. Mark Boldman, glad to be here. Heard Jay Leonard play on some new Martins yesterday. Wow. Jay Leonard. I should know who that is probably, huh? I was looking up uh, Billy Strings. That kid's great. Um, I was, you know, trying to trying to do a little bit of bluegrass research last night. Um, so I, I uh, did write a song. And so if uh, a new song and it's up, if you're not a member of the Discord, um, then... You can join up with this link, if, if at all possible. In fact, I think you can have a custom. If you've never been on Discord before, then you can create But try to have the same username on Discord that you have on YouTube so we know who you are. Because uh, it gets a little confusing, especially when you, we have the occasional troll that migrates from YouTube over to Discord and starts picking on people, and then we have to delete them both. <laughs> so we've had to do that recently. Um, in fact, I, I, he even showed up on the Facebook thing and started asking me why we, he was deleted, and I didn't even reply. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, okay, so Sam, that really explains the song to me. <laughs> we skipped the light. Fandango, I remember that. Turn cartwheels, cross the floor. Yeah, well, I guess it went, we went dancing. Probably some reference to some dance in the 50s or something like that and coffee doesn't taste good today because i put had a shot put in it so it's like extra bitter because i woke up with a migraine a, a mild migraine right right back here in my neck because i stupidly i was hungry right before i went to bed and i stupidly had some some uh, fritos spicy <laughs> chili cheese fritos which are like the most amazing things ever oh my gosh I finished them off, and then I went to bed, and I was like, no, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, Sam, you should have looked it up first. <laughs> no, it's fine. Trust me. If anyone should have looked up something first before opening their mouth, it's me. <laughs> so, Okay, so, um, so it, if you go to Tom's Bookmarks, you can download the PDF I did for Pent Up, okay? Um, and uh, it's based on the same chord progression and I'm basically using um, uh, these scales right here I had to think but I got it okay I'm using I'm staying everything within these scales only the only diff the only thing is in the bar 14 I slide up to an A up here everybody put your third finger on this A note here on the first string okay and play A and then G with your first finger and then open E Okay, and this is a little trick we're gonna utilize in coming lessons. Uh, one of the best uh, things you can do in, um, uh, true in guitar, but it's very true in bluegrass, is utilize open strings. And your open strings can give you a moment to get somewhere else. So check this out, like I can play. See that? I use that open B string, the next note in the in the scale would have been D. So if I, you know, as I was playing the first scale, I 
hit that open B string, and I could hit the D here, but I chose to hit it way up here with my first finger. So then I can continue there, and you're like, well, why would you do that? Well, because now I got all this. Uh, so it really, what it does, it makes it sound like you're A, you're a lot faster than you really are, and B, it, it kind of extends the range of the instrument. So bluegrass players do this all the time. They utilize open strings all the time to kind of move somewhere. Um, uh, I'll do stuff like that's kind of a different. That's a different uh, lesson there. That is um, uh, playing descending scales with open strings or ascending. It could be ascending. It's a really cool thing. It's actually, it was something banjo players started doing, and I think guitar players started copying it to try to sound like a banjo player. A lot of times it'll be like. They'll play, they'll, they'll pluck down here to make it sound a little bit more banjo-y. It's a word. Look it up. Banjo-y. B-A-N-J-O-E-Y. Banjo-y. <laughs> so, okay. So let's. Oh, uh, your tummy hurts just thinking about the <laughs> the, the, the the chili cheese. Uh, the chili cheese. We're out of them now. Now I'm thinking about after we're done, I'm going to walk over to Ralph's and go get some more. <laughs> but no, I won't do that to myself. But anytime I eat something salty before going to bed, I almost always wake up with a stupid migraine. Not migraine. I don't want to say migraine. Just a basic headache. I've had blinding migraines where I can't even open my eyes and get out of bed. But it's it's not that bad. That's pretty rare. And I touched my face, so everybody take a sip. So let's get started with the review. Um, and then I'll play this pen up a couple times, and then maybe what we'll do is we'll start analyzing it a little bit, okay? Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and start putting up uh, little screenshots of it. We can talk about it, okay? So um, um, get your pick, your favorite pick. Try to get, you know, try to find some different picks, too, at some point. Um, I always, every time I go into a guitar store, I try to buy something. I bought a pedal when I went to Westwood Music because they were blowing things out. So I got I, I got a DS1. I have a modded Boss DS1. I didn't have a stock one. So I went ahead and bought a modded one. It was 50 bucks out the door. I mean, I was just like, okay, here you go. I felt bad. Gosh, I just... You were not going to know the Carnage in, for uh, a while. Um, it's going to be kind of like, <laughs> at some point, we're all going to come out of the bomb shelters and we're going to just <laughs> survey what's left and it won't be much. And that's going to be sad. I'm a little worried about, I want to go to Europe. I'm dying to go back to Europe. And, and I was talking to Beth last time. I'm like, is it going to be A, super expensive or B, like super crowded? And she's like, I don't know. I don't think people are going to be very quick to travel. And I'm like, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I hope you're right and I hope you're wrong at the same time because I feel bad for these so many places in Europe, especially, but even in America, that they make most of their money from tr tourism. Um, California is definitely one of them. California is, you know, number one industry, of course, is, is uh, the um, tech, not tech. Uh, but all the tech companies are leaving California now. And then Hollywood, um, of course, a lot of Hollywood stuff is being moved out of state because they want to go non-union. Is the reason they're doing that. And then uh, tourism, you know, is has always been kind of in the top three. So there was a time where tour was, tourism was number one in the uh, in the early 90s when, uh, because the military used to be in the top, top three, but they closed uh, the peace dividend. Oh, air quotes, take a sip. <laughs> the peace dividend after the fall of Berlin Wall resulted in, I think, six army bases or six military bases in California closing. And so that meant that like housing prices collapsed in the early nineties. Um, and, uh, uh, people were leaving California in droves, kind of like they're doing right now. So we'll see. Okay. So let's do this, uh, G major pentatonic. This is the easiest of the three. Uh, start with the open E string and then third finger on the third fret, open A, second fret, Open D, second fret E, open G, second fret A, open B. Hey, John, third fret D. Avito, hey, good to see you. 
Yeah, the Christmas cup. Open E and then G. Okay, so that one should feel real familiar. Let's go backwards. G, E, D, B, A, G. Yes, yes, Gudenwand. Gudenwand. Um, e, D, B, A, and G. Okay, and then what we're going to do to the G major pentatonic to get the C major pentatonic is we're going to take the Bs here and here, and we're going to raise those up to Cs. I didn't talk about that on Monday, but that's all we're doing. We're changing one note in the G major pentatonic to to uh, to be, make it a C major pentatonic, kind of like we did with this G major scale. Uh, you know, we would make one change to make it a C major scale, but we're not going to do that. We're we're not doing major scales right now. We're doing pentatonic. So here we go. Open E. This is the C major pentatonic, the second one right here. The second one right here. <laughs> I wonder it would be funny if a weatherman did that. It's like, you're in California, and he points at New England, and he's like, oh, shoot. So he just flips the map over. That would be awesome. That would be something that David Letterman would have done. Now, you, I grew up in Indiana, and David Letterman uh, was started out as a weatherman in Indianapolis. So I saw him, and he was funny. One time he said we were having, we had hail the size of canned hams. <laughs> but he was actually funny. He was like being, doing his bit, his comedy bit uh, <laughs> with, the, with the weather, and that's how he got started. So that's why uh, if you're in California, what's his name? Fritz, not Fritz Coleman. Who's the other one? There was another one that he would, well, Fritz Coleman, I think, tried to be a comedian too. There were a couple of weathermen that tried to, tried to become comedians, um, actually do, do stand up because David Letterman got success. So now, that was how you did it. You know, it's like, oh, you have to be a weatherman first. <laughs> so, but before that, he actually, he, he went to, I think he went to Ball State. Yeah. But before that, he worked at Atlas Supermarket. And one time, my mom left her wallet at the at the <coughs> um, at the supermarket in Indianapolis. And David Letterman called her and said, "Hey, you left your wallet." <laughs> so he brought it over to her. But it was like he was in high school. <laughs> so it was pretty funny. Okay. Yeah, he's a Ball State guy. Uh, you're supposed, to, oh Dennis, you're supposed to tra travel to IK. What's IK? I should, uh, IK, IK, Iceland in October, but thankfully we got, oh, oh, back in, yeah, the airlines are being really cool right now. Oh, UK. Um, yeah, the airlines are being really cool right now. Um, in fact, I'm real tempted to start buying some tickets for some flights or something uh, and not use miles because it's so cheap. Um, and then, because they're, they're saying, oh, you can reschedule or get your money back or whatever, but I don't know. Okay, so here's the C one. Okay, so we're gonna start with open E, third fret. So it starts out like the G chord, or G pentatonic, and then open A, and here's where it differs. We're gonna to go to C here instead of the B, third fret, then open D, second fret, open G, second fret, first fret, second fret, open E, third fret. So we don't have an open B string. You'll notice there's an open string missing on this scale. Excuse me, okay, backwards is G, E, D, C, first fret, second fret, open, third fret. Hey, Richard, I think I didn't say hi to you. Third fret, or second fret, E, open, third fret, C, open, third fret, open. Let me do that again, because I talked to Richard and it confused me. Three, zero, three, one, two, zero, two, zero. Three zero, three zero, and then maybe end on the C note, or even end on a C chord, just to kind of center yourself. Like it makes it sound more C when you play it, when you when you throw in that C chord there. Yeah, no, definitely. Actually, we we're flying back to Indiana for a wedding. Uh, in the spring, so we're definitely going to do some domestic flying. But as far as flying to Europe, last time we went to Europe, we went first class or business class. 
I do it every now and then, so I, I knew what to expect, but Beth had no idea, and it was so awesome. She it was like, and she's not, she's so easy. She's not like, oh, I could never fly any other way. She's like, no, no let's just fly, you know, coach. In fact, put it, have him put us on the wing. She, you know, I'll sit in the bath, and she doesn't care. She's like, no, no, no. I'm like, no, no, no. We got to be comfortable. <laughs> so it was pretty nice. Okay, last scale, the D major pentatonic. And again, from the G to the D, we're only changing one note. We're taking that G note and we're going down to F sharp. So we're taking every G that you see in the first scale here, okay? And we're just take, making them F sharp. So my garden is here, so I don't know if you can hear that, but it's a little noisy. So we're gonna start with an open E and then F sharp with the second finger, open D, I'm sorry, open A, then B, and then T. Yeah, that's a good lick right there. hammer on and try to try to keep your hammer ons even right um, uh, not that's a different sound that would be those would be grace notes these are hammer ons okay uh, so there's your D and then from the D we got open two four okay and again this is the scale that's just not as natural to play as the other two uh, open D and we have three notes on one string and then we have one note on, on the G string Okay, so we got, so we have open, second, fourth, second, again, D, E, F sharp, A, and then open B, D, third fret, open E, and F sharp, backwards, F sharp, E, D, open, second fret, A, fourth fret, F sharp, second fret, E, D, and don't worry, I'm just saying the note names just to help you kind of hammer this information home. If you don't know it, every time I say it, you'll be that much closer to knowing it, okay? Here's a B, A, F sharp, and E, and then end on a D or a D chord. You can even put that F sharp in the bass. Okay. Hey, Benadi, 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 sorry. Right? Holly, yeah, I know that picky. But again, with this scale, you could go with your first finger because you're not doing anything on the second fret, okay? So you could use your first finger. In fact, you could do backwards. You go F sharp, E, E. So once you get down to the bottom, back to the D. You work your way back to the D. That might be a good way to finish off that scale when you do it descending. Now the other thing we could do a good exercise and it's hard uh, is to do like groupings of three, groupings of four. Things like that go very very slowly um, and then the other thing is try to alternate picking. Um, a little tough but again now in this song, I the, I did we're utilizing you know that F sharp here out here on the fourth fret, um, and so um, so let me do uh, let me play it a couple times through try to anyway. Um, I'm I'm playing um, using the jam track, so let me grab well okay one last time. Here's the Discord join link if you if you're new to the um, if you're new to the live stream. We have a Discord page, and you can go there. I, everything I, like these diagrams, everything I create for this live stream, I've uploaded to Tom's bookmarks on the Discord, okay? So you can go there and download all the crap that I've uploaded, um, including this, and then the first song, which was, uh, where is it? It's getting buried. I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle. Here it is. Uncle Jan's Reel, which is titled and dedicated to uh, uh, Dennis's um, uncle, favorite uncle, who passed away last week of uh, COVID, um, and continued sympathies to him. And Dennis, you keep getting better, okay? I hope you're doing well. How do you feel right now? Yeah, and if you do do the Discord, try to use the same. And, and you know, please, if you join the Discord, do a little intro of yourself. I, I know some of us like to be really... Uh, 
uh, kind of keep our profiles lower. We like to be lurkers, and I, I'm totally fine with that. Trust me, I've lurked on plenty of live streams and not jumped in. So, although I probably should more promote. I don't know that anybody though, when they see a name, they go check out that person's channel or anything like that. Uh, but uh, the uh, the thing is, I've been my friend Josh has been doing Twitch. The guy I went to get a guitar with last week, uh, and I'll. He'll, he'll actually talk. He talked about me on Friday um, because we he was talking about the song ETA, but the Bieber song. And um, am I playing one tune in all streams? No. Um, but I, I'm not sure what that means, Andy. Sorry. I mean, one tuning, uh, standard tuning. Um, and then here's the tune I'm playing over. Here's just the basic... So I'm going to give you the link to hear this. Oops. There we go. So here's the jam track that I'm playing over. Then I'm going to play this over. So, so I'm going to play what's called, I'm calling pent up. All right, because it's using only the pentatonic scales. Once I get my windows in order. get rid of that jam track. All right, jam track stop. I had to turn it up a little bit. Why is it so quiet? Is, it, is this set? Oh, this is set. Eh, it's set pretty low. I can turn that up. Oh, it's going to scare me later. <laughs> ah! Okay, so um, I messed up a couple times. It's not like I wrote the song or anything. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, are you playing one tune in all streams? No. Um, no, the two, these tunes that I'm playing in these streams are, are songs I wrote. Um, so the first one, again, like I said, Uncle Jan's Real, which you can get if you go. See, I'm sorry. It's glare. There we go. Uh, you can get that if you just go to the Discord. You can download that. It's on Tom's Bookmarks. And then the new one, if you want to grab this one, I'm going to do a, some screenshots right now of it so, so I can, um, uh, we can talk about what's going on. Uh, you know, with the plane of this. And it's basically, these, I would call these, these are etudes in a sense. These are studies. Um, see, etude is, etude, is that French for study? And then, so what would be the German version? Dennis, what would be the German version of the word etude or study? Um, in Italian, would it be etude also? I'm not sure. Uh, but anytime you have, a studio, a studio would be in Espanol, and then I've seen songs actually called a studio or studia or something, something to that effect. Uh, let me grab this here. Here it is, and I'm going to do some screenshots so that I have, I can, we can talk about each phrase. There's one. All right, and the one 
two more. Hold on a second. Gardener. My gardeners are not blow and go gardeners, though they actually do stuff. But right now they're blowing. <laughs> so, okay, now this song also starts with a pickup. The other one, um, Uncle Jan's Reel, started with a um, a pickup on the beat on beat four. So it was like one, two, three, bam, 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 right? Four and one opus. Opus is a is that is that a word for study? That may be. And I touched my face so we can take a sip. Oh, gosh, that's so annoying. Ugh, coffee's so bitter. Woo! Because I had a shot put in it for my headache. All right, so now I got to go to desktop and grab these. Okay. Let me grab this, put this here. There's the first phrase. <laughs> you like this covering up my face? Oh, dang it. Look at that. I, okay, I got to delete this. Uh, let's see. I, I'm going to recut it because I didn't notice it. I had the bottom garbage on there. I didn't do a very good job cutting this. Let's see. Let's crop it again. All right. Much better. All right. Now let's try it. Okay. Much better. So let me make this. You, I, like I said, I know you love it when it covers my face, but uh, where can I put this? I want to put, I guess I put it kind of over my, but over, uh, where did I put it before? I guess I put it down here, didn't I? I forget now where I put it before. So now I have to aim the guitar over the, <laughs> I have to be a little bit more aware of the guitar. But first we're going to talk about this kind of in a, a thematic or, or a compositional perspective. But that pickup, you'll notice that first note you see, and I'm talking about the music, the music, uh, not the, I guess I go up here and I can get, I can move this. Don't really need this right now. So I can remove that. Yes. I guess I'll put it up there, but uh, then I go like this, maybe that's better. That, <laughs> that works. Does that work for you guys? Yeah, I thought op Opus is like a series or something. It's part of something. Uh, what, are we getting answers to that? Because I... Yeah, yeah. A studio. And, yeah, I've never heard that term used. Yeah, opus is a Latin for work. Yep, yeah, that's correct. Um, so, you see that first note there? Just, just talking about music notation. The every note there are every one of those notes are eighth notes. Okay, so they get a half a beat. One and two and three and four. Um, however, some of them have a longer value because they have a tie. Like if you look at the second note in the first bar, under just below the G chord, um, that open B string, that is tied to another eighth note. And so what that what that means is that is value of a quarter note. So it's held longer. So you have that that kind of thing. So so um, uh, so the so the First thing I want you to see, though, is that first eighth note, and it's it's what what you might call a stranded eighth note, but it's by itself, so it needs its own flag, and that's what that little thing is coming down off of it. So that's a flag, and it's only one flag, so that's why it's an eighth note. If it was a sixteenth note, it would have two of those coming down. Okay, um, and so uh, that if you if you add up those eighth notes, there's three eighth notes there. That, so that means that you're coming in on the end of three one two three bump 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 okay so if you want clap with me okay one two three and there's the downbeat of the first chord okay one two three okay now the next thing i do the first thing I, you can notice is there's two themes going on here uh there's two thematic ideas going on i'm gonna make this a tiny bit smaller sorry 
apologize. Um, one, there's a rhythmic theme, okay? So I use the same rhythm in every bar in this first four bars, okay? And the rhythm is one and, and three, and four, and one and, and three, and four, and one and, and three, and four, and one and, okay? So that's one way to, to, to give instant familiarity to your audience, okay? Now keep in mind, this is a study, but when you're writing music, one of the things you want is you want people to immediately be, be able to relate to it. I mean, unless you're like Snarky Puppy or something like that, okay? Uh, then you want to alienate as many people as possible. <laughs> I mean, there's definitely guitar players that do that. Um, but when we're talking about the people's music, and I would say that bluegrass definitely falls in that camp, um, the people's music, things like that, uh, you want... You want something that people can kind of relate to or understand easily and start to get. Um, and so a rhythmic theme is one of those ways where, oh, right away you're like, oh, okay, I get that. I understand. It. Even if you're tone deaf, you can hear that rhythmic thing, okay? Uh, can you zoom in a bit of a short music sheet? Oh, yeah, I can try. The only problem is, where do I put it? I can make it bigger, but then the problem is, I can't, you can't see my, I I'm, I'm actually I already have my foot on a, a guitar rest, so then you can't really see my, well, I guess you can see my hand there a little bit, or I could sit further back, or I don't know, how do I do this? Like that maybe? That work? Does that help, Sam? But the other thing you can do is you can, um, if, if you can download the PDF, print it up. If you have a printer handy, print it up so you have one in front of you. Because I because I put, I put posted this up in the Discord. So you can go to the Discord and um, <clears throat> download that for free. Um, so, and then the other thing, the other thing that I do um, is that the first melodic idea in each bar is an, a, a low note and then a higher note. You know, it's, it's two, the first two notes, the first note's lower and the second note's higher. Like, that's kind of why I called it pent up, okay? So we're using pentatonic shapes and uh, the melody starts out by going up. So the first lick, okay? It's the um, second fret to open, okay? The A to the B. So the first two notes in the first bar is the first notes in the second bar is first two notes in the third bar is it's actually in every case it's second fret to a second fret to the next open string and then the last one is, is the only time it's not a second or I'm sorry not uh, not uh, that pattern sorry it's not this is not a second that's a second that's a third that's a third that's a fourth okay but but I so I did I used two devices there to create thematic movement. Uh, one was the rhythmic and one was the melodic. Um, and then from there it, it doesn't quite follow the same, you know. And the first two and the fourth one are similar melodically. In their movement but the third one is a little different but I use the third one to get me up to a higher position okay because because really the the if you look at the first two melodies the trend was down I, mean, I could have done that uh, or yeah I could have done something like that but I would have run out of strings really fast okay so oh yeah Boy, yeah, if you're, if you're watching this on a cell phone, that's really tiny. Uh, but I would definitely, you know, at some point go with your laptop or, or your desktop and download the file and then print it up so you have a hard copy. Uh, that'll make it a lot easier. I'm sure Holly has done that. Um, Holly's probably marking hers up really good. Are you marking it up, Holly? <laughs> so, okay. So, it, um... So we can start out with the first lick is really stereotypical. And that might have been what, in fact, the first one was 
-hmm. similar kind of beginning, but this one's one, two, three, and four, and. So let's do this with me, open D, and then second fret, open G, second fret, open B. Okay, that's how it starts basically. One, two, three. Okay, it definitely sounds very cowboy right there. That much of it right there. If I, if I wanted to make it more cowboy, I would have done it in 3-4. Three, 3-4 four. Three, four is a... Waltzes are much more cowboy Western. If you want to do it... Like, if we were to make this... Like... That would be far more like sitting by the campfire with the cowboy hat on, and spurs rattling, and all that kind of stuff, okay? Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> Your phone looks like this. to join. Thank you. Oh, Sam. Oh, Sam. Uh, oh, you're good at reading music. Well, you're, you're, you're better than me. I, I'm lousy at memorizing songs. Okay. So, okay. And then from there, we're going to go to the D here, the third fret, and then we're going to do the scale backwards. Oh, let's see. Like that. So third fret, open, Second fret, open, then I'm going to go open again on the, uh, so two opens in a row. G, open G string, open D string. And then that that is our movement into the C. Now, here's another thing. Remember, we talked about this before. What's the first note of every phrase? What is, which part of the chord is it? Well, my first note is actually the second of the G chord, so it's not the root third or fifth. But on the C chord, I'm playing the third. On the G chord, the second time, I'm playing the B, which is the third. And on the D chord, I'm playing the fifth. So melodically, I didn't um, follow the rules I did before, but I think for the most part, that's the only bar where I'm not playing a chord. To, no, that's not true. Then, then I get to bar nine for three bars in a row. I'm not playing the chord tone to start uh, because I create this little, this little another you know kind of a B section modal theme, um, and you'll see that in a second. But. Um, <laughs> And then we get to that E note, and that's the third of the C chord. Okay. All right. And then we're going to do A, second fret on the G string, open, descend down to the E, and then down to C. Okay. So we're going to go uh, E, G, hold it, and then A, G, E, D. C, and then we're going to go, that's the moment where we're going to go down to the third of the G chord, and it's the B, and we're going to go B, D, okay, and that's second fret, that's the downbeat of the third bar, and then D, and we're going to hold that for a quarter note, so it's okay, and if you're picking, if you're using pure alternating picking, it'll be down, up, up, Second fret, E, and then G, second, uh, third string open, second fret, second string open, back to second string, or third string open, and then to the downbeat on the D, sorry. So it's, a, that's the phrase. And you can work on these, uh, I think Holly's doing that, she's kind of working on things phrase by phrase, really, really, um, Really common tool uh, when you're when you're learning a piece, like in classical music, you know, man, when I'm learning a piece, you know, sometimes I would go bar by bar. Okay, so if you did that here, do the pickup. Okay, so you're doing that's the phrase. That's the first phrase. The next phrase would be. Okay, um, you could do each of these phrases individually, and then you know, kind of practice. Them. Slowly. And then once you have that one down, you can move on to the second phrase, okay? But 
But I wouldn't move on to the third phrase. What I would do then is once you have the second phrase down, combine. This is this is uh, we're talking about pre air quotes. Get your coffee or get your libation, Andy. Um, uh, we're, we're talking about practice tips or, you know, and in fact, I need to do a video on how to practice, which I don't know that I'm the greatest practicer, but I guess I, I guess I was at one point. Um, I didn't really have, nobody taught me how to practice. So I kind of just did my own thing and, uh, yeah, uh, I, this one is, is pretty hard. I try, I played it at 125 last night. And then uh, I didn't even try 150 because 125 was, I was sweating bullets. <laughs> so, I mean, I'll get it down. I'll be able to do it. I don't know if I'll be able to do it 200, but but we'll see. Um, We got the D pentatonic in there. I got a hard lick on the D pentatonic for all the practice. Um, but when you're when you're working on segments, okay. So what I would the way I would break this down to practice it, if you're you know you want to get it down, uh, and I'm this is this applies to any piece of music. Get that first get that first phrase down, then the second phrase. Okay, and this applies also to memorizing something. Um, and then once you have those two phrases to get down. Play them together and practice the two and get that down. Okay. Once you have that down, now work on the third phrase by itself. Okay. That, that third, uh, where you start on the second fret, open D, and then E, G. Okay. That's the third phrase. And then work on the fourth phrase. Actually, it ends on a, the next bar is G, open G string, I think. Uh, yeah. So, okay. And once you have those two down, then work on, sorry, um, the third and fourth phrase together. Ah, uh, shoot. Shoot, what am I doing? Okay, there you go. Now, once, I'm trying to make sure I do the picking right. Um, then once you have that second group down, do the whole first phrase, the whole first four phrases, okay? Okay, and that's how you slowly get a piece down as you work phrase by phrase, add the phrases together, get two more phrases, add the phrases together, things like that, especially works great when you're working on a very complex classical piece um, sometimes phrases aren't exactly one bar long. They might be longer. They could be shorter. But, um, you know, you, you just basically break it into segments. Get that segment down. Add the next, you do the next segment, add them together, and then go to the next, you know, like that. Okay. So let me get rid of this and let's go to the second group. Uh, remove. All right. Bye-bye. All right. So we'll see how my cropping skills were on the second one. Okay. Not bad. All right. So this is the second phrase. And again, now it's really big for you. There's a little, there's a little dot. Okay, I'll drag this down. Hopefully you can see that. I know if you're, I know if you're using a phone, it's tough. Let's see, do I have any, nothing, it doesn't look like any, let's see, phrase by phrase, don't go on until you get it three times in a row. Yeah, no, that's exactly right though, I think. That's a great, that's a great, uh, way to do it. Um, and then where are we at? Uh, dashboard. Where are we at subscriber? -wise? So we're 86,172 subscribers. I say we because you guys are a big part of that. Um, uh, so it's, it's getting there. It's, it says I've added 1,600 subscribers in the last 28 days. So at that rate, a year from now, I'll be at 100,000, which seems like forever. But if, 
you know, and it, that could slow down because the, the subscriber rate could go down. Um, current analytics, let's see, right now, of course, I'm live. Basically 11,000 views in the last 48 hours. So not bad. Um, and again, most of those views are of the seven tips for older beginners, which is how so many people come here. I started, Bruce, I've started to, uh, when I comment on when people thank me for that video, I try to say, hey, join us on the live stream. So I don't know if anyone, hey, Mark, phrase bar measure, uh, uh, oh, Mark, are you unfamiliar with my termage, terminology? Yeah, phrase bar, me, bar and measure is definitely interchangeable. Bar and measure is definitely interchangeable. Phrase may not be. A phrase could last five bars or two bars or a half a bar. Um, a phrase is a musical idea. Um, generally. And so that, so with that, you know, um, uh, you can, if you can figure out, see, that's, that's one of the things you learn in music theory. And, and even that's kind of ambiguous, but you know, they go, okay, where's, what's the phrase? How long, you know, and some people go, well, this is the phrase and they point out a four bar phrase and others will go, well, no, that's the phrase, you know, and, and with this, the first, um, the first four bars of this, I, I, I call that first bar a phrase because it is the melodic idea. It's a, it's a rhythmic and melodic idea. And so there's a phrase. And then I repeat the phrase and repeat the phrase and repeat the phrase. And again, bar five here at the bottom of the, right here. There again, for the fifth time in a row, I'm using the same rhythmic pattern, okay? And the same melodic idea of the first note being lower than the second note. But then it ends. It stops there, okay? So um, melodically, because 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 it can become like a, 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 a you know a, a dentist drill. It can get a little old if you use it too much. So I I you know again. Mm -hmm. uh, no, sorry. And here this page. Um, I touched my face. So sorry. That's one of our drinking game rules. If I touch my face, we all have to take a sip. Um, you mean a half or a quarter note? Um, you know, I could have done quarter notes. I, I just, I think it looks in some ways to me, it's easier to read. Um, it's really kind of up to the um, I've got, uh, I've got a, I've, as soon as we're done here, I've got a, a game session that I got to play on and I'm playing lute. You can see the lute back there. I'm playing mandolin. I'm playing clap. No, I'm actually going to play, I think, guitar lele, which is a guitar ukulele. Um, so, um, but yeah, so in, I could have written a quarter note there. So you could have had an eighth note and a quarter note and then five more eighth notes. And that would equal four beats. Um, the, Something about having all those eighth notes there, though, it just, it's probably not, one of the things I didn't like about way, the way that notation did it, it should not have done the big bar at the bottom, connecting that second note from the third note. It, those should have been individual, but I really wasn't complaining. I could have written those as, I could have just as easily done a quarter note there as a tied note. In fact, it actually would have been easier to do a quarter note there. Um, and I may do that in the future just to give you options for, you know, to see. Because, uh, again, my goal here is to have that music in front of you, even though you're probably looking at the tab, because I know how most guitar players think. Um, and um, you, you, um, uh, so I, the idea is that maybe, you know, maybe you'll start to see it. Now, one of the things I love about the music notation versus the tab is you can see the melodic flow, right? The up and down and everything. With tab, you can't really see that. It doesn't look the same. It does. It's not represented because the numbers don't go up and down. They go one two zero or one three zero three one two zero two. It does. You know, it doesn't make complete melodic sense. Um, reading music is uh, is very very similar to reading MIDI. I actually can read MIDI. I can sight read MIDI notation too. I have. A, I had a composer that used to have me come into the studio. And uh, he would make me read the MIDI, which is 
I, I should, could do a screenshot so you could see it, but um, let's see. Because I, do I, I have something open right now. Let's see. Um, so. <clears throat> Just let me just show you this. It's funny because I mean well, I'm out of practice because I don't work for that composer anymore. Okay, but this is what MIDI looks like, and this is Logic. Um, this is not, you know, necessarily industry standard. Uh, let's see what I want. I want this, and okay, <laughs> giant. Ah, no, that's not what I want. I want this thing. How do I, where is it? Uh, oh, here we go. Sorry. Okay, so this is MIDI. Okay, now, um, and you, it's, you can't, it's hard to see the context, but if you look at, at the, 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 the background there, you can see it's like gray and black stripes. Well, those are piano keys. Um, okay, so like for example, the lowest note there is the very first note on the bottom. That light, that blue note, is an A. In fact, that's what this is. That's what's written there in MIDI. I can read that. Um, and th the reason you might, that composer friend would have me read that. Okay, and that yellow line going vertically is just the cursor. Um, anyway, the reason he would have me read that is because um, if you notice the color change, okay, that bottom note down there, the light blue, is softer, is quieter than the green ones. It goes from like, very like purple to red and you know purple blue you know blue green to green to orange to red or to yellow to orange to red and so it was a way of having you know he wanted me to play with those dynamics on every single string <laughs> and it was hard work uh you know we got what he wanted but he would play these classical guitar things on the piano and he really liked his articulations and his dynamics and he wanted me to emulate his dynamics and usually it wouldn't be so much on one chord would be like this. It would be more like, you know, where the, the volume would rise or diamond, you could see the color change. And uh, because we use the same software, I was able to recognize the color change and do the dynamics accordingly. Um, I'm gonna remove that now, okay. So I, I don't know if that's even vaguely interesting to any of you, um, but that's, that's kind of the, um, uh, that's, uh, that's another form of music reading, essentially. Uh, let's see, John says, the video for older players was great and just what I needed. As you mentioned earlier, uh, you're making a video on how or what to practice from. I, yeah, uh, that, yeah, I should do that. Um, okay. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, I'll show you the guitar lately. Um, because, uh, the composer wants a guitar, but he said, you can use a mandolin and I listened to a guitar and guitars are, um, kind of like the lute. It's like a small, small lute, very, very small lute. And it's nylon strings, not steel strings, a mandolin steel strings. And I felt like it was a little brittle. So I'm, what I'm going to do is just do the first phrase and send it to him and say, Hey, what do you think of this? Um, I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that phrase I just played you, and I'm gonna double it uh, because the ukulele, the guitar lele, is only single course, which means one string. Like a guitar is, it's eight, it's six courses of single strings. You know, six single strings. A twelve string would be tw six courses but pairs. Uh, so it's twelve strings, but it's only six courses. Okay. So um, let me get. I'll get to the question here in a second. Um, Yeah, I think I got, uh, do you, oh, do you have, does it have anything to do with the tied notes? Yes. 
the tied notes is create when you add when you tie two note two notes together they add together in value you don't pluck them twice you only pluck them once that's why the tab only has it once see the when i made the tab it actually does that automatically i just drag that you know the measures down and it asks you what's the lowest fret um and so <clears throat> i uh it, it automatically did the correct tab um so let's see yes and i will uh, pull up the guitar lately in a second yeah, and Brian, don't worry about reading music. I'm just, I, I intentionally did, you know, if I didn't want you to read tab, I wouldn't have put it on there. Um, oh, awesome, Leo, thank you. Uh, so I think I got the questions. Yeah, no, the, the I ought to conceptualize and see if I can come up with seven tips for practicing guitar. Uh, probably one would be warm up. Uh, another would have a plan. Uh, you know, have a goal. Uh, okay, so this this next phrase. Okay, the next. Okay, so again, I named the song "Pent Up." So once I came up with that name, I think I came up with a name before I finished the song. So then I realized, okay, I'll just call this "Pent Up" because <laughs> we're all pent up with the COVID thing. So I thought it was appropriate. We, we, the next one is going to be called, what was it called? Uh, Sad Dad Bachelor Pad? <laughs> Not the next one. But when we do the minor pentatonics, uh, we'll, call, we'll call that one Sad Dad Bachelor Pad. <laughs> so, and it's not a very bluegrassy name. Neither is Pentop. But, um, but uh, I, at that point, I, I realized, okay, I've got a theme. The, the theme is pent up. So I, I, I want to keep that going. So obviously, bar five is the continuation of the theme. But even bar six, it's the music's climbing and then falling. Oops. And it's so tempting to go into um, the diatonic scale there. And that's kind of why I just did that lick. It's just the C, C major pentatonic, right? You know, up and down. I want to take this first finger off and go. But no, that would be that would be a combination, and and again, this is what makes this difficult because we're trying to stick with one scale set for the song or for the plane, and that's not the real world. The real world is you you would utilize all of your tools, and my goal is to give you as many tools as possible. Okay, and so the first tool was the G major scale. The second tool now is these three pentatonic scales, and then the next tool next week is going to be these three scales, but with the blues notes added. Okay. So we're gonna we're trying to hey hero we're trying to I'm trying to kind of give it slow you know keep it slow yeah we need lyrics but you won't have a breath in here though pent, pent up <laughs> well we already know what the first lyric is <laughs> right well no I, I am so pent up <laughs> here in California <laughs> okay I haven't been a lyricist in a while <laughs> hey Josh. So, um, so here we go with uh, uh, the first phrase here is open G and then third fret. So it's a fifth. That's a that interval is a fifth. G and then a D and then open E, third fret, open E, third fret, and then open B. And that really sets us up nice for that first note. Okay. So again, if we're gonna practice our phrases, hey, do you? You would practice that phrase from that first beat, that first G, all the way to that C note right there. Okay? And that would be the phrase you would practice. Then the next phrase would be this, and we're just going to take the C pentatonic scale, go up to the, from the C, D, third fret, open E, back down to the third fret D, C, A at the second fret, G, open G. Uh, is that, how far do I go? Okay, E. And that's the phrase. And then I would go all the way to the D, and that would be the first note of the next phrase, okay? Okay, and that's, um, uh, um, that's now we've got the first two phrases, okay? And um, the first two phrases, open, open means open string, and no finger on it. And if you just keep, you don't need to ask every time, Josh, if you just keep listening, you'll start to figure this stuff out. 
That's how it works generally. Okay, so um, the open string. Okay, you end on that. Now that you've got the first two phrases, then you do those together, right? There we go. Okay, the next phrase is just, it's just a little, uh, it's kind of its own little melodic device here. I'm doing open D to open G, and then hit the open G again. Okay, so the oh, so the rhythm again. Let's hand clap the rhythm of the first bar. Okay, bar number five. It's one and and three and four and one and one and and three and four and one and. Okay, the rhythm of the second bar is pure eighth notes. That would just be one and two and three and four. It'd just be like you're clapping for me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. No, you're fine, Josh. I just just. Just know that you're going to hear the same thing over and over again. You'll figure it out. Um, okay, and then the next bar is... Uh, it starts out like the first bar five, but it just keeps repeating that phrase. One and, and three and, and four and, and one and, and three and, and four and, and... Okay? You got that? So you can practice... That's another thing you can do. I should start making notes of this <laughs> for practicing. Um, but when you're reading, you know, if you're having trouble reading a passage, one of the first things you want to do is just learn the rhythm. Like you could just play with open G string. You could play the rhythm of this whole phrase, okay, just to hear it so you get familiar with the rhythm. So you don't, then at that point, you don't have to read the rhythm anymore, right? Once you have the rhythm down, then you can go to just reading the notes. So here's the rhythm. And four and one and two and three and four and one and and three and and one and two and three and four and okay so um so the the um the the great thing about getting the rhythm down is now that that rhythm is in your head um you can start to work on the the note reading um that's one of the downsides to tablature okay if there was no music here you really wouldn't know the rhythm of that tablature. And that's one of the things I don't like about tab is that now you can have tab with rhythmic notation on it. I've totally seen that. And I could have had added that to it. If I was only going to have tab, then I would have added rhythmic notation. Okay. But um, because I have the combination, I feel like you can go back and forth with your eye and you can kind of see how the flow of things are going. Okay. So, hey, Tony, what's going on? And hello. <laughs> And low to you too. Um, okay, so let's play. I'm going to play this second, uh, third phrase again uh, over the G and D chord. So we have G. And then here's our Holly. Sorry. Sorry to do this to you. Now you could use your third finger. Okay, you could use your third finger if you want. But here's the. Okay, uh, so we have D, G, G, F sharp, third, uh, which is the fourth fret of the fourth string. We can get your pinky on it, and then second finger on the second fret of the third string. Okay, and this is a good opportunity to practice those consecutive upstrokes. Okay, because remember, I want you to do. So if we're if we just do it with open strings, and that's okay. <laughs> Here's another trick. You can because you've got picking issues, right? Especially when you're going across string sets. All right. Another thing you can do is you can play this phrase with no left hand, but do the string changes. So check it out. This would sound like this. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, it's hard. Um, but what that means is you don't, you're really working on the string skipping aspect of it and you're removing the note values, but you're keeping the string locations there. Okay. I don't want to get too convoluted here, but that's another mm -hmm. trick you can use to get, um, something down. That's really hard if you want to play it really fast. Okay. All right. So, uh, so that first phrase, that third phrase in this, so bar seven is so down, up, up, down, up. Up and then down on that open G string. So that's the third phrase. Okay. 
Then the fourth phrase is, and I'm using my pinky on that. I could do this. I could lay down my third finger on that. Okay. I could lay it on my third finger, or I could add my pinky like that. I feel like I like having the pinky there. I like having two different fingers on that, but uh, it, it's up to you how you want to do that. Um, so that's that last phrase is open G, second fret, open B, third fret, and then third fret, and uh, there, and that's a downstroke, and then you got to go try to go to an upstroke on that D string. You can break that down and just practice that lick. Those two notes right there. And that, okay, that is the same as the first fret, very, the pickup of the song, right? That's the very beginning of the song. So that, pit, that, that open D, second fret E, and open G, that's the same as the first, very first three notes of the song. Okay, so the whole phrase here, the whole second phrase, the question about bars and measures and phrase. Um, there's another term that we can use. Um, the term is stave. All right. Um, ST. You could say staff, um, but I more often will say stave. Okay. And I'll show you what staves are. So this is a, here we go. If we get some too much light on it, it doesn't look very good. Okay, so this is a stave, this is a stave, this is a stave, this is a stave. So in other words, this this line, this line, this line, this line, right? Each of these is individually staved. So we, we've we worked on the first stave and this, this is the second stave. So when I said this phrase here, the second phrase, I meant this entire stave, all right? Okay, so now we're gonna move on. And the next stave, the next four bars, um, remove. Yes, it has a melod its own. I've kind of done it again, where I've created a new melodic idea. Um, is this it? No, here it is. Yeah. So this is our kind of what I would call our B section. All right, and so I've got a melodic idea that we're gonna we're gonna kind of milk for three bars. And it's a fairly easy idea. So I kind of, again, trying to try not to keep the, not, try not to make these things too difficult, but I'm trying not to make them difficult, but I'm also trying to make them interesting and somewhat melodic and listenable. Okay. I think this piece, um, I'll play it at 125. It starts to, it starts to come alive at the faster tempos like any bluegrass thing would. Um, eighth notes, which what these are, eighth notes are not uncommon for bluegrass. What's, What's more typical, though, is that the um, hey Romero, what's going on, man? Um, what's more typical is that um, uh, um, you've got you're you're playing at like two hundred beats per minute. I mean, like you're ripping, and that's why you know it's like. <laughs> there but um, okay now remember our pickup going into this is the same as the pickup going into the song open D and then second fret on the D string E and open G and then here we have the downbeat okay and that's over the G so that's that's a second I'm not playing the I'm not playing the root the third or the fifth of the G chord I'm actually playing the second but that's okay because I'm going right to the root and I'm going to the third okay so I'm going root, I'm sorry, second fret, open, second string open, third string open. And I repeat that. So it's a little, this is a little, this is like a riff. This is something you could use over. Something like that. Um, it's kind of, sound, kind of sounding like Thunderstruck, right? Okay, so uh, 
Oh, my pleasure, Romeo. Thank you for being here. If you weren't here, I wouldn't be here. I mean, you specifically. If you weren't here, I wouldn't be here. I've just been waiting all day for Romero to, to log in. Yeah, hey, I'm glad, Michael. You know, the, the again, uh, that's kind of my point. It's like, hey, maybe you can learn to read music through all this. Why not, right? I feel like <laughs> part of the reason, part of the reason, uh, you know, people aren't going to movies now. They're watching Netflix, but uh, they're not watching sports very much. I think part of it is people are like, you know what? I'm not going to sit on a couch and spend three hours watching a stupid game. I'm going to learn something, you know, with this whole thing. And people are getting in a zone where they're learning new things, which is really cool. I mean, I'm learning, I'm trying to learn Spanish. Um, and, uh, uh, and I'm learning new things too on the guitar and, and I've been working. So it's, it's, uh, uh, definitely, uh, it's cool to be, take, make the most of this time. If we're going to be stuck at home, you might as well make the most of it. Um, and make lemonade out of this lemon out of these lemons <laughs> so I, can, I see 2020 right now with two lemon two lemon <laughs> okay second finger open open b string open third string second finger second fret open okay can you play that so that's the first phrase next phrase is same thing but there with the and you could leave your first finger down if you want, or you could take it off. That's player's choice, okay? It creates two different sounds. One is more, I would say one is more, was that Norman Blake? Um, with more ringy, okay? And the other one would be more like a speeder, more a speed player. More staccato, shorter. Um, so totally up to you. Do a lemon keys. <laughs> oh, Kurt, Kurt, yeah. Um, and then, uh, then the next phrase is again. We're starting. So on the C chord, sorry, the second second phrase is A G. We're starting on an A note, which again is not in the C chord. It's in the C pentatonic. You can see the A up there in the C major pentatonic, okay? Um, but it's actually the sixth of the chord, right? It's kind of this, there's that A, okay? But actually, um, oh, cool, you bought Rick Beato's book. It's good, huh? That's how he makes his money, I think. And then we're going to do the same thing. Okay. And that's over the G chord again. Now we're going again the A, which is the second of the G chord. Open G, third fret, which is D. Open G, third fret, or second fret, open, open, third fret. And so that's that's obviously a melodic idea that I copy and pasted essentially, right? It's it's a new melodic hook <clears throat> that again uh, rhythmically is all the same. It's just pure in sixteenth or eighth notes. In fact, this whole uh, stave, the, okay, these four bars here are all one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And thank you, thank you. It's just pure eighth notes, okay? So rhythmically, this phrase, this this uh, section or stave of the song is uh, is very redundant and very simple, rhythmically. Um, Performance-wise, okay, and then you get to the end of that phrase, and the last phrase is just basically, I did a, kind of like we did on the C pentatonic that one time where I went, Okay, we're doing the same thing with the D pentatonic. We're going up. Okay, kind of more of a theme, continuing kind of a them thematic thing there. Okay. Uh, and we gotta get 
get that pinky involved. And then go ahead and end on the G string. Uh, go from the D, open D string, to the G string to end that phrase, because that's going to be the first note of the next phrase. And again, the next phrase is going to be um, the same, same first bar. Bar um, 13 is going to be the same as bar 5. But that's it. But again, it was the idea is to again. Oh, here we're back at the basically at the A section. This is kind of the B section. Oops. Was... Ah, see, I wanted to use that open G string. So hard. Brian, uh, no chance. Stay, staying in and watching and <laughs> walking dogs. Uh, let's see. Oh, is it snowing where you are, Brian? Oh, uh, winter here in Western North Carolina. Wow. Ice. Oh, yeah, quarter. Yeah, yeah stay out of ice. Oof. Man, I remember we, in, in Indiana, I think it's 1978. The winter of 78, I think. So, like, January. We had the worst ice storm in history and still hasn't been one since that's been worse. And um, my mom's house wasn't a very big property, but she had a lot of trees. I think there's three, 300 trees on her property. And, um, you know, you have a branch like this and there would be maybe this much ice around it, you know, like just, it was just crazy. And the, you know, the ice. And so what would happen is, a branch would at the top of the tree would break and hit the branches below it. And just all the branches would just come flung, crushing down. It would break off all the branch because the weight of the ice was so heavy. It would break all the branches. And um, it sounded like, and it was happening like for through the night and through the day. And you really didn't want to be under the tree when it happened. Um, I'm sure people got hurt, but um it sounded like a thousand chandeliers falling at the same time. It was like the craziest sound. All night long it was going on. You know, the little, the little bit of breeze would break off a branch and it would start this avalanche of branches. And my mom said it was God's way of trimming the trees. And it totally was. We spent the next week just picking up branches and burning. We actually, once it, once it thawed, we had to burn off. You know, we had an incinerator in our backyard back in the day when you could have something like that. And we just threw it in this big brick incinerator and started burning them. So crazy. So ice storms are crazy. Okay, now, uh, so the whole phrase here. And that's where we're going to go. So let's get to the last stave. You learned a new word today. Or most of you did. Remove. Yes. All right. So here comes the last one. Is it this one? No, it's this one. Yep. And this one's going to be shorter because it's just going to have, um, for, for one thing, it's got the same phrase we did in the first, in bar five. Now we have a position shift. We are going to slide up. Um, and that little, that little line leading up to that A note, or that fifth fret there is a slide. And I started to tell you something and I didn't finish, but there's a, so what we're doing is we're going to slide up here and use that E open E string to bring us back into position. So we're going to leave position. In fact, we're using the open B string to give us that freedom to go up there. If I was on this note, it might be harder. So, uh, so the theme uh, or the phrase, uh, the melodic theme and the rhythmic theme that we had in the first five bars is the same. In fact, that bar right there at bar 13 is the same as bar five, note for note. So open G, third, sorry, I'm good. I don't see the chat. Here we go. Now I see the chat. Where, where are we numbers wise? Okay, we got up to 46. We got up to 60 the last couple. It's weird. It's probably going to jump up here now. Watch it jump up. Right as I'm about to finish the lesson. Antwerp, nice.
Antwerp, North Carolina, or Antwerp, Belgium? Okay, so we got open G string, third fret of the B string, and then hold that, so and then up stroke on the E, and then G, third fret, open, third fret, open, so, okay, you can practice that a little bit, because we're going to go there, so do that, go third fret, open, third fret, open, third fret, slide up to fifth fret, and here, we're not, we don't really want to hear this note very much, this, we want, it's a, this is a grace note, we're going to go like that, okay, so slide third fret, to the fifth fret and then go to the third fret. Oh, Belgium, yeah. Well, that's what I thought. <laughs> but when when you said mint tea, I was thinking, boy, that's that's like a big thing. Well, mint juleps are a big thing in Louisville in the South. So I thought, oh, maybe she's talking about Antwerp, North Carolina. I've not been to Antwerp, Belgium. That's like a big diamond capital, isn't it? In, isn't that where all the diamonds are from? Okay, so we have... And so if you're practicing this phrase, you might want to do that. Okay? Practice that much of the phrase. Uh, go into the second into that second bar, bar 14 technically, but okay. And then use the open string. And now they hit the E string, so we went. Okay, and we're using that open string now. We got a split second to bring our hand back down to first position. So here we're in fifth, second, third position. I could spit it out here. And then open, and then third fret, second fret. We're just going down the pentatonic scale in the C major pentatonic scale, right here. Woo, I pointed right, right there. And then my hand looks old. I guess it doesn't look that old. I'm 59, so that's not too bad, right? <laughs> we were watching the show the other day and Sean Bean was in it, you know, from Lord of the Rings. And she goes, he's two years older than you. He looks like he's 15 years older than you. I went, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. But <laughs> the nice, the thing that works great when you're getting older with your spouse is, is, is that uh, your eyesight starts to go. <laughs> so they look the same as they've always looked. She still looks like I, the day I met her because <laughs> I'm blind as a bat. <laughs> So, so stick with your wife if you can. Okay, so we have, or husband as the case may be. Uh, open E and then again, third, two, second, open, third, I'm sorry, third, yeah, second, open, second, and then the next phrase, okay? Um, and so we get, So I, that's just, that's out of our scale set, um, but it's a, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a glimpse into the future, okay? Because we are going to talk about moving up the neck, okay? And probably the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to make bigger, like, we're going to do two pentatonic shapes. So we're going to do G major, uh, pentatonic number one, and pentatonic number two. So they're going to be, you're going to have them both in one diagram. And then we're going to do, like, we're going to do licks like that. And then C, you're going to have, uh, you're going to have uh, C, C major pentatonic number four, and you're going to have, you're going to learn number five too. And then so we'll have licks that go like, We're going to start to do that where you start to move up the fretboard, which is cool. And then the D, that it'll be nice because we'll get away from the stupid pentatonic here. We'll be able to go to, go into the pentatonic uh, number four from number three. And so we can be doing like... Okay. Whatever. I totally messed it all up. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are forgiving. I know you're forgiving. You wouldn't be here if you weren't forgiving. Okay, so the phrase again here, we got. Okay, and then the last phrase. Okay, uh, Holly, sorry about this one, but this is the pinky one. We're gonna get the pinky involved here. 
Okay, that's easy. Okay, the first four notes totally open D, second fret, open G, second fret, okay? Sorry, I just thought of a yes song. Okay. And then we're going to hit open B string, A, second fret, and then we're going to reach down and get this D, or F sharp, sorry. Open B, second, get the F sharp, open D, and then end on a G note. And see that now, now we have a, see that's a half note right there. That under the, that, that note there under the G, um, right uh, here, right there, that's called a half note. You notice it's hollow. It's hollow, it kind of looks like an egg or something. Uh, there's a stem on it, so that's worth two beats. Uh, so it'll be kind of like this, one and two and three and four and one, two, three. Boom, boom, boom. So you let it ring. Whatever the, oh yeah. Okay, so if you have this, if you have this, go ahead and get it out. I'm going to go ahead and play. I'm getting lots of emails. Okay, cool. All right. I'm gonna to have to stop here in a little bit. I got work to do. I've got a game to play on. Uh, oh, 45. Well, yeah, we're getting up there. Weird. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna play this again. Where is? Oh, it's way over here. All right. Uh, and I'll, I'll I can bump it up to 125. But let me do it. Let me do it at uh, 100. And this, oh, let me give you the track again, because that, that link is way behind us. Copy. Um, and this is a fairly popular video of mine, as far as my videos go. It's got 127,000 views, which is cool. Um, so there's the link for this jam track, and it's basically 10, it's 10, 10 minutes of G, this, that chord progression, the G, C, G, D, G, C, G, D, G. OK, um, and and you can use the uh, little settings tool here. If you click on that, um, you can change the speed. So right now I've got it set at normal, but you, it's because it, the normal speed on this is 100 beats per minute. You can change this by going down or lower. And it's real easy to figure out what tempo you're playing at, because 1.25 times 100 is 125. One point or 100 times 1 1.5 is 150. So if you click on the 1.5 speed, which is faster, um, you're going to be playing at 150 beats per minute. If you click on the 0 0.75, then you're going to be playing at 75 beats per minute. Totally cool that this is um, set that. And I, yeah. Oh, and I actually put that in there. Okay. All right. One, two, three. Too loud. Okay, hold on. Got to wait for it to come around. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Get rid of this. Okay. I will, I'm probably what's going to happen because I'm not doing pure alternating picking like I should be doing. When I want to play it really fast, I'm going to run into problems because I'm, you know, my hand's going to be tied up and I'm going to be plucking in the wrong direction. Okay, here's 125. Let's see if I can play it at that speed. One, two, three. <laughs>
Okay. All right, should I try 150? But see, it's starting to sound more like a bluegrass tune at that tempo. I don't know if you can hear the jam track, but here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> Not bad. I actually did it better that time, I think, because I had to concentrate. I think because I'm concentrating harder. Does that make sense? So I'm concentrating. I, I tend to, like, make less mistakes. If I think, oh, I got this, that's when I start making mistakes. Okay, so let's try 175. Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> point is the great thing about a metronome is that you can change the tempo um the great thing about in, in in this case you can change the tempo here you can change it in kind of bigger chunks uh, a metronome you can go up so if you got it down at 150 but you don't have it at 175 you can use a metronome to go okay i'm going to do this at 155 and try to get it there and once you have it there move it to 160 and then to 165 and so forth and so forth that's that's why i love that uh, flat pick apprentice website and i'll i'll uh, give you the link to that again because he does a jam track he'll do a jam track for every tempo excuse me like you know he'll do 150 155 160 165 170 all the way up to 225 i mean uh, increments of five beats per minute it's like 15 different just for cattle and the cane that's one of them, you know. One song. He, he, this guy does a lot of work for this, uh, uh, and he he deserves uh, he deserves as many views as possible. But I'm not sure how he makes money on it. But um, I don't see any ads. No ads. I mean, maybe he my complete profile, Dave. And he's in Pennsylvania. Ping pong <laughs> interests: flat picking, reading, ping pong, not being at work. <laughs> Favorite movies, Good Will Hunting, Forrest Gump, Prim Primer, No Country for Old Men. Oh, that's a great movie. Forrest Gump, I love Forrest Gump too. Favorite music, and he's got you. Huh, that's <laughs> funny. Okay, uh, profile views, 8,800. <laughs> so anyway, um, okay, but seems like a nice guy. And he's done a lot of work for, uh, you know, for a lot of people's benefit. So that's a pretty cool thing. All right. So you can, like I said, you can see the oud, or not the oud, the lute. My lute is out, and I spent like, oh, oh, I gotta get the sorry guitar later. So this is a Kayla guitar lately. Um, it's like a classical guitar. Uh, it's like a classical guitar up a fourth. Really, really small body. But basically you can do, you know, it's kind of like having a ukulele with much lower range. Um, it's same, top three strings are identical to ukulele. In a normal ukulele, this string would be up an octave. So it's not quite, uh, and this is a Kayla, uh, a Kayla and, or Kala. Someone, I did a review of this, I think. And yeah, I think I did a review of this and someone said it's Kala, not Kayla. And I'm like, I, it's weird because I thought I did some research on that. And uh, before I, because I wasn't sure, I was like, is it Kayla or Kala? And I, um, 
thought I did research on it and talked to someone from Kayla and they said it was Kayla. <laughs> but uh, maybe I'm wrong on that. I don't know. Like I said, I, don't, I should <laughs> I should Google more than I do. But <laughs> uh, let me get you a link for one of these because you can get them on Amazon, I'm sure. Hold on. If you're interested in one. It's not expensive. And I, to be honest, to be, I use it for pop more than anything. But I'm going to use it for this to get this gittern sound, I think. I'm gonna try anyway. Um, and the melody, the thing was, uh, let's see, what's it? It's uh, uh, and I'm gonna double it. So it sounds like, Two, two strings playing at the same time. And that will give it a little bit of that phasing sound. Um, Kayla, or Kala, guitar, there it is. Um, yeah, six string. So, and, they, and there's a Yamaha one too. I, I'll, I'll, I'll put links up for both. Only four left here. For, this one was, and this one, mine's got a spruce top. I, this one is nice. I like this one here too. This this one's a more of a, a kind of a it's a satin finish, um, mahogany back and side top. Yeah, back and sides rosewood fingerboard front. What's the top? I'm assuming the top is mahogany too. It looks like the whole, the whole thing's mahogany, or maybe it's. Um, copy. Okay, Colin. Okay, good to know. I'm, I'm bummed that I offended somebody so so highly on the, on my video. And here's Yamaha. Now I know Yamaha is pronounced. <laughs> and oh, this one. Oh, oh, okay. Well, it's fine. They won't let me. I, I can still give you the link, but let me see if I can find someone else selling it. That let me. Uh, no, that's it. So, but like I said, I, I've used this for writing pop hooks, you know. Um, like. Whatever, you know, just, it, just trying to come up with fun ideas on it. Um, and, uh, but I've also used it for, um, a lot of times I, uh, when uh, like Austin Wintry will write me some, uh, ukulele music that's below, like he wants the notes played on ukulele, like single note stuff. And he wants lower notes than I have on my ukulele, especially, especially on the soprano ukulele. Um, so I, I, um, I, uh. I pull this thing out and this thing works great because it sounds like a ukulele because it is technically a ukulele. So call it. Okay, I'll remember that from now on. Thank you, Holly, for setting me straight. Generally, I'm glad to know when I'm wrong. <laughs> so, all right. So so Friday, we're probably going to do some more work on these scales. Um, and then um, Monday, we'll add blues notes to them, okay? Um, and... And then I'll have to write a new song that uses some of these blues notes. And that'll be fun. Um, and uh, I'll try to really utilize them. So we might end up with an overload of blues tones in, this, in, the, in the song. But that, because I don't want it to be like too much like pent up where it's just pentatonic scales. It needs to have that, that sixth note in there. Okay. Yeah, it's a great little sound. It's a great little sound. Uh, let's see. Deeru, what are you asking? Dennis is... Uh, 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 oh, you're, oh, you're still very, yeah. Oh, you're anti-gun on Yeah. I don't know a gun, but my, my kids have a lot. Uh, let's see. My kids like going shooting. Um, let's see. But I don't really want to talk politics because... Uh, 
Um. <laughs> you already shot it all. Yeah, ammo is expensive though. I have a friend that makes his own ammo. Um, it's a lot cheaper. Um, let's see. And he 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 knows the production is good, so he he like he's never worried about bad casings or anything like that because he's very meticulous about that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, no, that's fine. It, totally fine. Okay, so let's see. So again, Friday we're going to. Um, yeah, I have a suspicion who would give me a thumbs down. That's fine. <laughs> I don't care. I, I I know who might have done that. So if you've been following the stream today. Um, um, let's see. Uh-oh. Uh, right now I'm green, but I haven't been paying attention to that little, the little teeny tiny box at the bottom of... Um, my uh, OBS software. So, hey, Jamie, what's going on? Do I play banjo? Jamie Banjo is asking me if I play banjo. Poorly. Not good enough to put banjo in my handle name. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So, yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, okay. Oh, question about guitar action. Uh, was that, did you ask me that or somebody else? I mean, I generally like a lower action, but also you, if it's too low, it's going to buzz, especially if you're a heavy hitter. So heavy hitters, in fact, I was watching a video um, with Billy Strings, the bluegrass player, and it was a, a rig rundown. So if you enter Billy Strings rig rundown, they talk about his guitar and the guy's looking at it and goes, yeah, your action seems pretty high. And, the, you know, Billy's fast. And you're like, dang, that kind of goes against your thinking. It's like, if you want to play fast, have low action. But, you know, bluegrass players are kind of like rockabilly players and flamenco players. They play fast, but they also play hard. And if you pluck really hard and your action is too low, like I lowered my action on my on my flamenco guitar too low and it's too buzzy if I'm not careful. When I dig in, it really buzzes. So I have to I have to actually be, it's not one of those things you can undo. I have to get a new nut and put it in there and then start over again. Um, so uh, but my guitar, this guitar action is fairly low. Um, and so I try to have a lighter touch with it. And strumming is not too bad, but it's like if, you, if I dig in really hard up here, it's pretty low. In fact, it needs to be probably redone. Uh, the neck needs to be taken off and re reset or something uh, over because it's just an old. It's an old Martin, and they don't have a. It doesn't have an adjustment screw on it. Most Martins don't. Um, so. Uh, you're supposed to keep medium strings on it, and that's probably... If I put a set of mediums on here, it might actually bend the neck a little bit more. Uh, these are lights. Uh, but for what I do, it generally tends to work, and sometimes that buzzing thing, too, is, is idiomatic for the instrument, so people expect to hear that sometimes. So, um, But if I'm going to do bluegrass, I might pick a different guitar. If I were going to record these songs, I might do it on a different guitar. So... Um, the saddle, it, it, Romero, it's, it could be your neck. Um, you may need to do a neck adjustment. And so what I would do is watch a couple of YouTube videos of luthiers or known guitar techs um, about how to adjust the truss rod on your guitar. Um, a lot, of, and if you ever, if you are adjusting a truss rod, I mean, an eighth or a quarter of turn will do it usually. So you don't need to do a full lap around the, you know, um, but it's either tightening or loosening. If it's if the neck is back bowed or fretting out, or or if it's too bowed and the action is too high, um, then an, a neck adjustment of one way or the other will fix that. Now, generally, if it's too too bowed, I think if you I always get it mixed up, but I think if you tighten it a little bit, it'll flatten it out and it'll make the action lower. Um, if if it's back bowed, your neck, your it's probably or flat, it's probably too tight. And you need to loosen it a little. And again, I would start with like an eighth of a turn um, very, and then let it sit for a little while. 
and then do it again. And you may, you may not, you shouldn't have to take off the strings to do it. You may be able to just loosen the middle two strings and then move them aside and make the adjustment with a Allen wrench or, or a special special wrench depending on the type of uh, truss rod end you have on it. But uh, uh, yeah, Martins have adjustable. Uh, they do have truss rods now, but they didn't back when this one was made, or they didn't choose to use them. Uh, so yeah, exactly, Dennis. That's what I'm thinking. Um, so let's see. Nice. You traded your re reloader setup for <laughs> nice. Oh, you, oh, so you had a reloader too. Okay. So for making your own ammo, is that what that is? Okay. So I'm going to sign off. We're not going to talk about guns because I don't know anything about guns. If Alex were here, you could ask him about it. He's made his own guns and everything. So um, and they're in, they're, they're more into it. And I don't think they, they're into it as much as they were, but, uh, they were into it for a minute. So, yep. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, mine's a D35. I don't think it's an HD35. I think the difference is the, one of the differences is a herringbone, I think, right around the edge. This doesn't have the herringbone. I love the herringbone. It's such a beautiful look though. All right. So, uh, thanks so much for watching. Alon, Alon Davies. Oh, thanks for, I <laughs> appreciate it. Uh, thanks for jumping in there and not being a lurker. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate that. Bob Schumann, Dennis, John, Daru, Romare, Gary, Bruce, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you, hopefully, Lord willing, on Friday. And uh, we'll continue with these pentatonics. We're going to work them a little bit more, uh, maybe work do some snippet work um, along with a track or something. Um, and, uh, we'll, we'll do that. And then, you know, I was messing around too with bluegrass jam last night. I felt like I wish that I wish my jam stayed on the chord twice as long. Like I wish the jam was two bars of G and two bars of C and so on and so forth. It changes pretty fast. Now for writing melodies, that makes it a lot better because I, it's, you know, you, you got, you got something to write, you know, to lean into when you're writing. Um, but for soloing, it's nice to have a G chord a little longer and a C chord a little longer, but. Anyway, have a great day. Leo, good to see you too. Uh, Sam, thank you so much. Uh, all the regulars, God bless you guys. Um, I hope you're doing well. Stay safe. Uh, don't drive on that. Don't drive on that ice storm, okay? <laughs> Just so, okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.